Jared Poland Frono's photo.com and this is your three, two, one, boosters and ignition. And lift off of Artemis One. Photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Data Color and their what's the date? Oh, all right, I guess it makes sense. Let me try this again. This fix is brought to you by Data Color and their Black Friday sale, which you don't need to wait for Black Friday to take advantage of their sale. Starting right now, you can save up to 30% off on products like the Color Reader EZ, Spider X Pro, Spider X Elite, and the must have for every photo and video shooter out there, the Spider Checker Photo. Hell, buy one for yourself and one for a photo friend whose color needs some checking. See what I did there? I used the we're checking to mean multiple things. Anyway, for more information or to buy one of these products and save big, head on over to datacolor.com slash fro. First up, in a week that I thought was gonna be pretty slow for photo news, we've got quite a lot of rumors to talk about. Now, Sony Alpha Rumors has chimed in have at it, Hoss. that a new Sony A3 will be tested at the FIFA World Cup question mark. The reason I say question mark is Sony Alpha Rumors repeats, I am still not certain in a93 is coming in early 2023. Nonetheless, they said they're getting crumbs of information. You're a real crumb bum. Crumbs of information like the A93 will be lent to select photographers during the FIFA World Cup and possibly during the Asian Winter Games. Now, is now a good time to say that the FIFA people are a corrupt organization? Because they are. There, I, I said it. What are you gonna do about it? Nothing! Anyway, Sony Alpha Rumors is right. The A93 is coming, or is it? Is there really a need for a lower megapixel version of the A1 at this point? The simple answer here is dropping the price of the A1. The A92 currently sells for $4,500 and uses 2017 tech. The A1, on the other hand, sells for $6,500 and is a beast of a camera. Simply, and, and by simply, I'm sure it's not really that simple, but drop the price of the A1 to around $50,000 $5,800 and release the A1 Mark II. Done! Someone call Sony and get me a job because I should be their president of Sony USA. Phone call, who's that? Hello? Ah, uh, it's Keisha with Sony PR saying what? Oh, Sony wants to offer me a job because they just heard of my plan and that I'm right and the price of the cameras, I'm so good. Sweet, thanks Keisha. I will not be taking that job. Winning. Now, what if I went out on a limb here and said that there won't be a Sony A93? Then what? Watch it get announced next week or something. Next up in Nikon rumor news, Nikon rumors was told that the Z8 design has been finalized and is production ready. They go on to say they don't have any reliable leak specs as of now, but have been told in terms of specs and pricing, it will be similar to the Sony's A7R5. Of course, that makes sense as Sony more than likely will be manufacturing the sensor in the Z8. Sony's A7R5 sports a 61 megapixel sensor with a new AI processing unit, 8K video, four axis multi-angle touchscreen, 10 frames per second shooting, new IBIS system, dual CF Express type A slots that are reverse compatible with S SD cards, and much more. Would you like to know more? Nikon Rumors thinks we might see some sort of development announcement in early 2023, with an official announcement possibly at CP Plus in late February in Japan. They also go on to say they expect it to have a similar form factor to the Z6 and Z7, have improved EVF, improved AF, oh, shit. and the same sensor as the Z9. Now, I have no idea why they say it will have the same sensor as the Z9 after saying it will be similarly spec to the A7R5. There's no way in hell the Z8 will have have a stacked sensor, let alone the shooting speed of the Z9. That makes no sense from a business standpoint, and also no sense from a rumor website standpoint even to say that. My take is this. When the Z8 gets announced, it will be 61 megapixels, have a similar form factor to the Z9, but without the grip, shoot 12 frames per second with the mechanical and around 14 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Oh yeah, it will also have similar autofocus to the Z9, not the same, but better than the Z6 and Z7, not that that's very hard to do. It will also cost $38.99 with the grip setting you back another $500. Do you think I'm right? Let me know down below. And speaking of below, have you listened to the latest Frono's Photo Raw Talk podcast episode just yet? Because it comes out every Friday. The next episode will be our 25th and we'll dive deeper into all of these rumors and more. Would you like to know more? 
To check out the podcast, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast or search Fronos Photo Raw Talk wherever you get yours. What do you mean? And by yours, I mean podcasts. And finally, wrapping up the week of rumor news, we have Canon rumors dropping reports on the R1 and something they are calling the R50. Now let's start with the R50. The R50 in my book will either be an RF version of the M50 Mark II, which I love by the way, or the M6 Mark II. Actually, take that all back. I'm taking it back because I think we'll be seeing the RF version of the M50 first. Now an M50 to me will be a small form factor crop sensor mirrorless camera with an RF mount. Dual pixel AF, fast shooting, flip out screen, tiny EVF and a small price tag. If I'm correct, this will be one of the biggest sellers for Canon who will probably market it as a creator's camera. Oh shit. Every camera is a creator camera. What's next? An OnlyFans version called the Canon DP? I better move on to to the R1 before the, ah, oh, shit. The money truck is already backing away. Anyway, Canon Rumors is claiming a recent report that allegedly comes from a Canon Explorer of Light. The rumor says that Canon's goal for the EOS R1 is for it to be equipped with an 85 megapixel or larger sensor, 24 frames per second mechanical raw burst, and a big bump in sensor dynamic range. And I claim that that's complete and utter bullshit. I hate the R! The R1 will not have 85 megapixels. The R1 will not shoot at 24 frames per second with a mechanical shutter, and I can't gander a guess as to what the dynamic range will be. But is 24 frames per second with a mechanical shutter even possible? Future. And in a world where Nikon has done away with the shutter altogether in the Z9, and I've never used the shutter in Canon's R3 or Sony's A1, there's no way Canon's focus would be placed on the mechanical shutter. Now, if I had to guess, the R1 will shoot 50 frames per second with the electronic shutter in full RAW, have pre and post RAW recording, burst modes of 195 frames per second, with full autofocus and be roughly 32 megapixels. Oh, and not be released until sometime in 2024. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.